Now I'll just give you quickly, uh, you get repeating decimals when you do this, but there is a way to solve this and show them to be whole numbers. Okay? Um, I, if people are very interested in that, I'm not going to take the time to do it right now. I can show that if people want to write comments on the video, I will try to get the solution up. You can see I have my numbers and all my work written out here, which I'd be happy to go through, but it's a, too long of an explanation now. But something interesting happens. 1 divided by 3, I get this number, 0.333. I get these repeating digit numbers. But let's try to find a whole number first. I know 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay. I know 6 divided by 3 is 2. And I know 9 divided by 3 is 3. So I use that at first to set up my numbers. Now, if the way that we do this here is, if you notice here, for instance, 5 divided by 3, I get this number 1.666667. And I'm saying that equals 5. Well, why is that? Well, if I look up here at 2 divided by 3, I have this number 6666667, which equals a 4. And 4 plus the 1 here will give me 5. I can find this pattern same. This has to do with polar number pairs, these numbers that I'm showing. But again, it's a little bit complex for what I'm trying to explain here, and I don't want to get too bogged down in it. But what happens when I multiply by 3's? 1 divided by 3 gives me 7. 2 divided by 3 gives me 4. 3 divided by 3 gives me 1. Okay. 4 divided by 3 gives me 8. 5 divided by 3 comes back to 5. 6 divided by 3 equals 2. 7 divided by 3 equals 9. 8 divided by 3 equals 6. 9 divided by 3 equals 3. The same thing is going to happen when I divide by 6 by backwards. Now, don't be worried if you're losing me a little here. I'm about to explain this. 1 divided by 6 is 8. 2 divided by 6 is 2. 3 divided by 6 is 0.5, which is 5. 4 divided by 6 is 4, 5 divided by 6 is 7, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 7 divided by 6 is 9, 8 divided by 6 is 3, 9 divided by 6 is 3. So in my first group, dividing by 3, I have 7, 4, and 1, 8, 5, and 2, 9, 6, and 3. Okay. In my second group, dividing by 6, I have 8, 2, 5, 4, 7, 1, 9, 3, and 6. All right, what does that mean? What am I trying to show there? It's, it seems a little bit fuzzy, not, not the same clear sequence we started with in a lot of these. So again, I have these groups of numbers, 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, and 8, and then my 3, 9, and 6, which are easy to see here as a group. They were linked together in groups of 3. All right. This is another property that we get from this dividing process. All right, They're called family number groups. Let me say them one more time. The family number groups are 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, and 8, 9, 3, and 6. There are three different family number groups. Okay, How do we determine them? Well, let me give you a few ways to do it. Remember I said 3 and 6 here are my field. 1 plus 3 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10, which comes back to 1. 10 plus 3 is 13, which comes back to 4. 13 plus 3 is 16. 16 plus 3 is 19, back to 1. Okay, no matter how far I go, if I keep adding 3s, it's the same pattern. 1, 4, 7, 1, 4, 7, 1, 4, 7. And notice these numbers are as far triangulated from each other as possible. That is very significant when we come to talking about geometry. And in this system, numbers are not modeling geometry. Arithmetic is not explaining geometry. It is geometry. Okay? And that's going to be a very simple process to understand. But first thing you notice, 1, 4, and 7. If I add by 3, I always get those numbers in an unbreaking 
chain. How about if I go the other way? 1 plus 6 is 7. Now I'm using my 6. 7 plus 6 is 13, which is 4. 13 plus 6 is 19, which is 1. Or I could say 4 plus 6 is 10, which is 1. 10 plus 6 is 16, which is 7. Okay, 16 plus 6 is 22, which is 4. Forward motion is what the 3 is. The 3 is represented by the shape of a triangle. Okay, very easy to remember. A triangle is represented by the 3, 3 sides. Adding by 3, forward motion, triangulated motion, an arrow forward, which is what this is, an arrow, a vector, is forward motion. 6 is backward motion. It's a backdraft. Okay? So when I'm going backwards, I got 6. Let's look at my other group. I said it was 2, 5, and 8. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11, which is 2. 11 plus 3 is 14, which is 5. 14 plus 3 is 17, which is 8. No matter how far I go, adding 3 is the same. 2, 5, 8, 2, 5, 8. 2 plus 6 is 8. 8 plus 6 is 14, which is 5. 14 plus 6 is 20, which is 2. 26, which is 8. On and on. Backwards, 6. Forwards, 3. So if 3 is an arrow moving forwards, or a triangle, 6 is the backdraft balancing or giving equilibrium to that, which is called a hexagon. Six-sided figure. A hexagon. Just like I said, ultimately, this underpinning geometry, because I have a family number group oriented this way, I have one going this way. Always polar opposites are accounted for. And then a 3, 9, 6 is the same. Uh, if I go 9 plus 3 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, so on and so forth. You can do backwards. 3 plus 6 is 9, 9 plus 6 is 6, 6 plus 6 is 12, which is 3. They're related in the same way. All right? So, this is how we start to look at things as polarized, all right? So, you remember when I said these pairs going straight across. By the way, if I draw straight lines across this, from here to here, or here to here, okay? Or here, if I'm drawing across like this, straight lines, you'll notice that everything is equal angular triangles. In other words, this isn't, I should say, this drawing is hand-drawn, it's not exactly precise, but this, if they were lining up, they should make perfect equal angular triangles here. All of these are triangles, all right? Never connected at the base, though. They're only connected at the vertex, or the apex, at the point. So important. I can't emphasize how important that is in this math. Okay? Getting down these essential principles is how you do the advanced stuff. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you will never get there. You can play with the toroid all day. You're just kidding yourself. All right? So, um, so when my 1 is positive, my 8 is going to be negative. The, and these family number groups are always positive or negative at the same time. All right? They're showing synchronization. All right? When we do electricity with this, we're looking for synchronized electricity. Everything in reality is synchronized and controlled by its center point. All right? So this is the source of synchronicity. So when my 1 is positive, my 8 is negative. Then I know my 7 is going to be positive, my 2 is negative. My 4 is positive, and my 5 is negative. So when my 1, 4, and 7 are positive, my 2, 5, and 8 are all negative. All right, why is that significant? In other words, if I have an arrow going forward one way, I'm going to have a backdraft going back in the opposite direction. Just like when you watch water flowing down the street, uh, it forms a diamond, okay, from a triangle going forward to get a backdraft. And when I said my 3 is a triangle, my 6 is a hexagon, the 9 is a perfect diamond, which you see right here in this space. 